Nicole, I had a bad dream. What happened? I was at Disneyland and I was naked and I got arrested. What does it have to do about our podcast about salsa? I don't know. This, this is a hot dog, dog is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> what? <laughs> Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. I'm your host, Josh Sher. And I'm your host, Nicole Anaiti. And when we're not internet chefing it up over on the Mythical Kitchen and GMM YouTube channels, we are over here taking down the world's biggest food debates, getting naked at Disneyland, trying to ride the log ride, I, and suddenly you start flying, Nicole, um, and your teeth, they're falling out. They're going clink, clink, clink all over the ride. Your teeth fall out in your dreams? I have a lot of teeth falling that out in dreams. That is so bad. You have stress problems. Are you new? <laughs> We've known each other for like four and a half you years. Of course I have it's stress It's only problems. been four years. Don't flatter yourself. But then sometimes my teeth fall out in real life and it scares me. <gasps> Josh! I have dental issues. Uh, but that's not what we're talking about today. What are we we're talking, talking about, about today? Uh, <laughs> I literally started thinking, damn, I really got to go back to the dentist. What we're talking about, red versus green. This is a very simple debate. It is a very simple debate that comes mm, up in real life often. My favorite color is red. Is that what we're talking about, favorite colors? My favorite color is Kelly Green. It's actually the Eagles. I'm wearing a Kelly Green Go hat right birds. now. Go my, birds, baby. My nails are Coca-Cola red. That's beautiful. Um, so no. are my toes. <laughs> Prove it. Show feet. <laughs> really? No. no oh, okay. No. I, thought, I don't know. Do you want to see feet? Uh, um, I'll write it to come to and see what color my toes are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, put your Venmo in too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, yeah. No, yeah. you don't need to Venmo me. We're talking about red salsa versus green salsa. That's this right. is a common question that comes up when you go to a taqueria mm -hmm. or Mexican restaurant, as they are known in other parts of America, I suppose. <laughs> um, and sometimes they will ask you just red simply or red or green. Sure. What is your answer? Okay, I need a little. I need to tell you a little anecdote, if that's okay. Tell me an anecdote. We so, got all day. So this weekend, I went to Palm Springs with one of my girlfriends, Fujian, who I've known since I was five years old, and she's like my girl. Okay, so Love we that. go. So we go to Palm Springs, and like you know, it's a hundred degrees. We're out. It's hot. Mm. It's hot, and we are like, like, okay, let's let's get some Mexican food at that at Polanco, like. Uh, cantina bar which sure. is just like the hotel bar or whatever nice. and um she gets salmon tacos and i get a salad and then we get chips and guac to share but it comes with salsa how right? were the salmon tacos prepared uh they were grilled mm. but i didn't eat them yeah and then um so we get the salsa and to my surprise the salsa is green get the heck out of here and i'm like what wait you're talking about the salsa for the chips the salsa for the chips now that's a plot twist green. and let me tell you I initially, I always think to myself, my default for salsa is always red. I close my eyes. I look at salsa. I envision salsa. Salsa is red always first. Not to say that green salsa isn't delicious. I love green salsa and I actually choose it sometimes over other, uh, other than red salsa. But red is the default salsa. And I was shocked. Me and her were like, we have green salsa. And she's like, I know. And I'm like, isn't that weird? She's like, yeah. But like, we're just still going to eat it, right? She's like, yeah, whatever. But like, it, it made no sense. The default salsa is always red salsa to me. This is interesting because I think you and I are talking about two completely different things right here. What do you mean? So you're talking about like when you get chips and salsa at a restaurant, yes. green versus red. Yes. I'm very specifically talking about at like a taqueria, the kind where you can still get a burrito for $4.99 wrapped in yellow paper. Yeah, And okay. the salsas come in the little tiny... Deli cups. Well, this came on in a tiny deli cup too. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but it was at a restaurant. It but wasn't it, like a big old vivacious bowl of salsa like at the no, Chili's, it was my like, favorite it was Mexican like, restaurant. It was like one of those two ounce souffle cups that you get from like you know wherever. But it was you're talking about a chunky green salsa to dip the chips in, or we're talking a thin watery a salsa. Thin verde. watery That's salsa booty. verde, which was weird That's to booty. me. Me and her literally had a reaction where we looked at it, we looked at each other, we looked back at it, and we're like, this doesn't make any sense, right? I agree. Because and and always whenever I find myself like I don't know like. At a taqueria or whatever, I find myself always going for the red salsa first. Same. And then 100%. the green salsa is secondary. Agreed. Because I like spicy and I like the red. The red makes me think yummy food flavor, yummy, yummy in my face. Like a poison dart frog. The red yeah. signifies this is a good thing for you that you should eat. Yeah, but no, it goes against nature. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. It was so odd to me. I don't know that I've ever had that happen. Um, I will say just as far as colors go, green is almost at the bottom of my list. 
And when you start getting into like, if there's like a black salsa, if we're talking like an ultra charred chipotle salsa. Oh, I do love a black boom. salsa. If there is anything orange, I am going orange first because orange means habanero. Okay. And that means fun times for Josh. It means Josh uh-huh. in the next day might be hurting on the toilet a little yeah. bit, you know, hurting while you're squirting. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that was the grossest thing I ever it's, said. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Have you ever had the the orange peanut salsa? No. What the okay. hell is that? Okay. So one and time. And gakawatara? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what it's called? I think so. I went to ta- to Takaria one time, and they had a huge salsa bar, like like fourteen different salsas, and they had a really beautiful, like brownish orange one, but not dark brown, like light brown, like yeah, peanut, yeah, yeah. Bu- like peanut buttery colored, and it was habanero and peanut salsa. Wait, where was this? My brother sent me a picture from there. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. I think this I just- is what gets us up in the morning, folks. <gasps> okay, salsa bars with great <laughs> stuff on it. Okay, and did it have a picture of peanuts on it? Yes. Yes, I went to the. What okay. the heck was yeah, it though? Where- your brother, John. John. I know John, you're watching call this. Call in right now. He is watching live. I we know you're watching. Feed. You have to tell us where this is because I remember it vividly and I've never had a salsa like that. And it changed my life. A funny thing about salsa, right? Yeah. So we, I don't want to generalize this way, a lot of Americans think that salsa is very specifically like a chunky, sold in a jar condiment yeah. for tortilla chips, right? Fair. Salsa in the 1990s actually started outselling ketchup in America and it was no seen way. as like a massive change in tastes That's and demographic cool. Cool. and all that and it is very cool but if you look at the salsa breakdown on like what sells more than than others it's like Tostito salsa because they sell it right next to the chips in the grocery yeah. store which is very very smart mm-hmm. and Tostito salsa they make a salsa verde but it's it's kind of a bit niche uh, and then they got that chili con queso that's good stuff that's the good stuff uh, and, but most of it is very similar to paste picante sauce right yeah which is very, very tomatoey. It's very vinegary. The jalapenos are straight up pickled in it. Like, it's not a salsa that I've ever seen anywhere near Mexico, right? Of course not. No, I mean, but it's, it's its own thing. The only thing I could imagine is pico de gallo that they, of, put a, that they put tomato sauce on. It's like, if you, yeah, if you like yeah. pressure cook pico de gallo a little yeah. bit. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's you know? the only thing I can imagine that's like that's like it's, it's similar cousin. Yeah, but yeah. salsa like obviously just means I mean, sauce. sauce, right? Yeah, salsa means sauce. And so like you look at just the giant category. It's like if you went to Mexico and they said something called like America sauce. You know, which, which I guess I think they do. They have, right? They do. Or in uh, the Netherlands is a great example. There's a product <laughs> in the Netherlands, I believe, just called American sauce. It's the fry sauce, right? And in the Philippines as well, I remember a buddy texted me a photo of him eating deep fried balut, the post mature embryo of a duck egg. I love balut. Um, he was eating balut deep fried on the side of the street with a side of American sauce, and it was Thousand Island. That's so funny. Right, like a burger sauce, a pink mayonnaise. Of course it is. Yeah, yeah. But we think of salsa as this like one hegemonic. Uh, what's that other pretentious word I like? Um, idiosyncratic. Monolith. Monolith. We think of it as like a monolith. Archetype. Archetype. Like yeah. this is salsa. It is red. It is chunky. It goes on yeah, chips. Yeah, it's always red. It's always red. However, the world of salsa is like so incredibly, incredibly varied. I'm aware. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I agree. But to me, there's like, when I think of red salsa, right? If I When I think of the question red or green, I'm not thinking of paste, chunky, picante sauce served with chips. I'm thinking of thin, watery, chile de, ar- chile de arbol Which from I a taqueria. Like. Yeah. And then with the green salsa, I'm thinking of just, it's like three ingredients. It's like tomatillo, onion, jalapeno, water, water. boom. And yeah. it is just thin. It is watery. You are soaking your burrito like pani puri, Nicole. Like the little like yeah. crispy dumplings that you just soak the chutney in. I will say the older I've gotten, the less I immediately pick red salsa. I find myself leaning Whoa. towards green. I like accept the fact that green is a flavor that is good. You've like been there, done that. You've, you're like, I have I've eaten enough it. red salsa in my day yeah. that I can now yeah. go to the green. I actually think you helped in that kind of evolution <laughs> a little bit because you always have a jar of salsa verde in the fridge. I do. And I was always, I always had a jar of whatever chipotle, uh, whatever salsa that was mm. red was always in my in my fridge. But you showed me the world of green salsa in a new way, which you normalized it for me, which was nice. Thank you. Thank I, you. I, no, no, no. I am an influencer. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> please tell all the brands out there that you know to sponsor my freaking wedding. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I, <laughs> which is funny because if you asked me red or green, I would tell you red straight up. Yeah. Every single time, every time I get a breakfast burrito, every time I go to a taqueria, I specifically, I load up five things of their red salsa, which is hopefully chili de arbol, yeah. and then like one of green just to be a, ch- a change of pace. Sure. That said, like you said, I got a big ass jar of salsa verde. You're the hugest proponent of, of salsa verde that I've ever met. There's a very specific reason for that. 
because tastes good when you cook it. One, well, that's part of it. So okay. does red salsa though, because you can just it's. I mean, that's Ameri- true. Especially American salsa, it's basically marinara sauce with pico de gallo <laughs> in it, right? So like you, yeah. can, you can cook with it. Sure. But no, it does taste good when you cook with it. Like um. There are regional specialties like chili verde from like Colorado, New Mexico. I love chili verde. Bro, take a pork cock. I don't know how much oh pork cock you're cooking in your kosher home. None. Take a pork cock, pour some chili verde on it and just like sort of let it go. There's a place um, next to our vet that has a chili pork burrito. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, chili verde burrito. And it's literally just pork, tortilla, and green stuff. Yes. And it's so... This is how we win. It is so crazy good. It's like the best thing. The pork fat with the sourness of the tomatillos. Oh. Um, but no, uh, another Killer. thing I was going to say is that salsa verde in the stores is, is significantly, one, just better tasting and better made and like more authentic to an actual Mexican salsa than all of the quote unquote red salsas, I don't think it like tastes Tostito better. stuff. I don't think it always tastes better. But I think it tastes more akin to something you'd get in an actual Mexican restaurant, which hmm. is what I'm going for, roughly. Okay. You know? I don't know. I don't know. There's something about, I don't know. I, maybe I've just been conditioned to think that red salsa is better. I've just been conditioned that way. It's more It's more attractive. It doesn't matter. But the thing is, it doesn't matter if it's tomato based or chile based. I yeah. like both of them more than I would green. I would Same. choose. I would choose Weird. both of them before green. I'm putting green underneath. <laughs> uh, there's a very specific reason, too, that I don't love American red salsa. I, I love eating it with chips. Oh, my God. I could drink paste picante sauce. I think it is delicious. Yeah, everyone has like a has paste in their in their cabinet. Like mine's on the way back. But like I have it. I have it. <laughs> but I can't put it on food because it simply reminds me of white people taco night growing up which oh, i love well you know let me tell you and that's good on white people white tacos people. white people tacos they have a place agreed and i like the and, place and, and the, the place is underneath a jar of paste salsa yeah but at home when i'm making myself like a carne asada burrito the putting paste picante sauce on that tastes so wrong it tastes it's anachronistic it's sacrilegious it's a bastardization yeah so i can't do it um so i tend to get salsa verde because that tastes more like something I would get in a Mexican restaurant if I don't want to go to like a Mexican market like Vallarta yeah, yeah, or yeah. Northgate yeah, and yeah, actually yeah. get their good sauces. Well, what do you feel? What do you think about this? What about hot sauces? I know this might be like salsa, oh. but let's 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 tangent a little. Let's red, tangent a little. Red. Okay. Red all the way. There's no room. In, I have <laughs> one green hot sauce in my fridge right now out of ten reds. Okay. And it's only there to distract people. And it's a weird yuzu pepper sauce. You know oh, that one? I bought that one. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, yuzu it. Yeah. Well, no, I start, I bought that at my home before you bought it for here, but we <laughs> never talked about it. <gasps> it's the best hot sauce. Yeah, it's like a yuzu. Oh my god, uh, yuzu pepper it. hot sauce. Yuzu it is the best hot sauce. But aside from that. <laughs> Like I'm talking about like Mexican hot sauces. Yeah. I find myself, again, I don't know why, like in the past few months, like past six months, I'm like obsessed with El Yucateco Green. El Yucateco Green? Why green? I don't know, but it's, it's so It's like good. food dyed too, the I El Yucateco. Care. No, El Yucateco Red is by far the best El Yucateco. No. Or you get the XXX Hot the Black. The black one? Oh, I got, I got black sauces for the win. Let me tell you, I have a bone to pick with black Hot sauces. Why? I don't like the dye in the black ones, but I like the ones in the green ones. I don't know what's wrong with me. Something in my head's like, mm, maybe I shouldn't have black food dye. It'll make my poops weird. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I've just been conditioned to think black food dye makes my poops weird. Uh, let's talk about the actual like cookery difference in flavor notes in red. But I was going to talk about like. my poop. Job. I'll talk about your poop. Talk <laughs> about your poop. Fine, cool. I'm sorry, fine. I didn't I invalidate your poop. It's fine. Go- <laughs> I just had a good one right before this. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, like the, there are actual flavor differences between the two, right? And okay. especially when you're talking about hot sauces. Yeah. Because my favorite hot sauce brand consistently for a while is Arizona Gunslinger, right? And it's really good. It's really good. And it's very simple. It's pretty much the same ingredients as Tabasco, except it's made with red jalapeno peppers. Oh, God, something I. You want me to blow in it? Oh, God, I guess. I don't know. Can you take your glasses off? Don't <laughs> <laughs> you stick your tongue out? <laughs> <laughs> Did that work? No, not at all. But. <laughs> I'm sorry. Arizona Gunslinger has been my favorite hot sauce for the longest time, and it is very, very simple. It's vine ripened red jalapeno peppers. It's yeah. vinegar. It's salt. It like might be water. There's not much to it, but it is the consistency, the heat level, the salinity, the acidity. Sure. The texture of it is all perfect. They have a green one as well, and it's the same ingredients as that. It's just slightly less good. And the difference between a green jalapeno and a red jalapeno is simply ripening. That's right. So you let the, the green jalapeno sit on the Become vine longer. Red, yeah become red you're getting less grassy notes you're getting more of those like fruity darker dusky notes yeah and then and then and then a lot of hot sauces a lot of salsas are made of dried chilies which to me that's where the flavor really intensifies that's how you win that's why red is better than green 
I listen. I was team red from the jump, dog. But like, I love gre- I love green hot sauces right now. It's like my thing, and I love them so much. What are there's like yellow? Like yellow bird has the jalapeno yellow sauce. Yellow bean, fine. yeah, yeah. Yellow bird is delicious. We just got one from the uh, the hot ones box. Oh yeah, yeah. That which... one is absolutely gorgeous. Have no idea what's in it, but it's green, and I love it. Green Tabasco. I have a weird affinity for. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. How could I? N- do you love green Tabasco? A Chipotle bowl without green Tabasco is a Chipotle bowl. I will not eat. Wait, can we Crunching. go on a? Can we go on a quick? Can we go on a quick tangent? A tangent of a tangent. A tangent of a tangent I'm about ready. Chipotle. Okay, because yeah. now Chipotle, there have to be like ninety percent hey. delivery, right? What? Chipotle has to be like ninety percent delivery Why do you say now. That? Because Chipotle, they've like taken over the Postmates market. Like Chipotle burrito bowls are the number one most ordered thing on food delivery in all of America. I did not know that. That's incredible. Yeah, it's ridiculous, right? Not even burritos, burrito bowls. What a nation we I live in. I love burrito um, bowls. <laughs> but half the experience of early Chipotle for me, and I've been going to Chipotle since like maybe like 2006-ish, you know, mm-hmm. open in Orange County back when they were actually, you know, pretty good. Um, <laughs> but was taking all three Tabascos that they had and putting them on your burrito, the Chipotle Tabasco and the Jalapeno Tabasco, and then occasionally normal Tabasco. They had normal Tabasco there. Yeah, but nobody really got it. It was all yeah. about the Chipotle and the green. But we're losing out on that experience. As family values in America wane, so too. What camera are you speaking? Has our to? Tabasco? Uh huh. What? I don't know. I've been staring at the curtain most of the time. Oh, I thought you were looking at me. But no, that's a weird experience that we've just missed out on. What? Tabascoing your Chipotle burrito. Is that not anything that's sacred to other people? I love red. T- I mean, I love green Tabasco in my in my burrito bowl. But I don't like the Chipotle one. The Chipotle one's gross. I like it. It's I smoky. It. Wait, do you like Chipotles in general? Yeah, I do. So Chipotle, for those who don't know, it's a dried and smoked jalapeno pepper. And love them. Uh, fantastic. In a salsa, love it. In Which is why salsa, I say, especially like a black salsa, Baja Fresh used to have a fan. They probably still do. I just haven't been there in a while. You're going to bring a Baja Fresh? Baja Fresh's black Chipotle salsa. Ooh, I'm telling you, this is not just a red green dichotomy. We got to put black and orange. We in have there. to put black in there. I would orange? also throw in creamy green and okay. creamy orange. <laughs> because You want to talk about creamy green? You want to talk about salsa de calabacitas? Salsa aka de cagu- calabacitas. AKA acaguates, AKA mentirosos. <laughs> Let me look at this camera and say it. Mentirosos. Zoom in, Maggie. Like some sort of like Like novella. a telenovela star. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do it again. Mentirosos. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. All right. So <laughs> we're talking a lot about salsa bars. A lot of times you will go to a taco <laughs> truck. Salsa bars. salsa bars are half the reason I want to get tacos is because I love dressing them with you got the escabeche, you got the pickles, you got the onions, you got the rabanos, you got the radishes out there. Are radishes in Spanish rabanos? Rabanos? I Me and so. canta rabanos. Me and canta rabanos también. Me um, muchos uh, cantas <laughs> more than you. And if you're watching your carbs, you dip the radishes in the in the salsa. That's fantastic. I but just a lot do of the times because of joy. <laughs> there will be a very, very Creamy, but still also very flowy green salsa out there. Mm-hmm. It's generally rather mild. You assume there's some sort of avocado in it because what else is creamy, creamy and green? green? Turns out a lot of taquerias, especially during the inflation, avocado shortages, they were like sauteing zucchini mm-hmm. with oil, which adds a little bit of fat to it, and then blending that with chilies. Genius. Utterly genius. And I've made it at home. It's delicious. Yep. It's fantastic. So you got creamy green salsas. And then... The explosion. I blame Instagram for this. There's creamy orange out there, Nicole. What is? Is that just mayonnaise? Sauce? That's just mayonnaise, baby. But oh, you go to like a bar. You go like Ricky's Fish Tacos. Okay, yeah, I love. I, I, I love spicy mayo. Ricky stopped making no, fish no, tacos in LA a year ago, and it bums me out, dude. What? You know, you know Ricky's closed. I don't care. You don't care about Redu Borough. It was under the freeway overpass. I like Wahoos. Oh, get the hell out of here, Wahoos! Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to offend. They don't even fry fish tacos. Somebody Baja, went. So. Um, somebody grew up in the Orange County area. I <laughs> ate so much Wahoos tacos. Yeah, I like Wahoos tacos. They, they do good work. They're not my favorite. Um, what were we talking about before? I was really creamy different. orange. Oh, okay, uh, so creamy orange sauce uh-huh. is just mayonnaise. Correct. I don't want that. It's tough to dignify Always. as a salsa, right? It's not a salsa. It's I don't think salsa. that's right. I think we refuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's green versus red versus black, right? Versus now. orange. I'd say orange too. Habanero, not creamy orange. I don't think. I don't think so. You don't, you don't think habanero? I you love, don't think habanero deserves a place I love here? habanero. I love it. I think it's necessary, but I don't think it's necessary in this argument. I don't think it holds a candle. Well, hold on. Do you think, well, I, I'm, I'd like to throw out a, a positive clause here, right? What's up? What, what, why do we eat salsa? Yummy. Yummy. What are the reasons is yummy? What are the what are the Hot. flavor profiles? Hot. Hot. Hot's part of it. Uh, acidic. Acidic. Um, salty. Salty. That's what we want. We want yeah. hot acid salt. Yeah. Right? You got to balance all of those things. 
And then also there's the the inexplicable chili flavor, right? The thing that you can't quite deci- quite describe. Jalapeno tastes different from habanero. Tastes different from, from chili sure garble, does, et cetera, sure et cetera. Does, sure does. But I want to chase the heat. How many red sauces, how many green sauces have you actually had that can bring you to that level of like really riding the lightning? You will get your scalp itch and you're outside. I don't outside. need for my scalp to itch to enjoy the experience. I do, Nicole. I That's do. A I need problem. it so bad. Do you see me how we made that spicy chicken sandwich the other day on TikTok? Were you here for that? Yeah, I was. Bro, I housed that whole thing. Wow. And I hadn't felt that way in years. Like really letting chilies just grip you from your soul. Your heart starts beating a little bit. Your hair starts talking to you. I love That's food. That's what I want. I love food as much as you do, but I don't need those like vascular, like crazy experiences vascular. to like, to like, I don't need to be transcended like into the void every time I eat food. Throw me to the nether realm when no, I'm eating chilies, when I'm eating salsa. Time. So much emphasis on that experience. You know where you can get that? Watching, I don't know, watching a beautiful movie for the first time or, I don't know, going sledding. You say, oh, sledding. I heard a different word. <laughs> what, what do you think I, I said? heard I heard S-L-O-T-T-I-N-G. Slotting? No, no, no. S-L, like S-L-O-T. Like you're Slot? being a real S-L-O-T right now. S- like putting money in a slot. No, like, you, like, like, like gambling. No, like, a, like, a, like a woman of the night. Like s- like, like a, slothing. Slothing. Yeah, yeah. Going sleuthing. Uh, <laughs> Hey, you want to know something funny? Green sauce is never spicy enough. That's what I'm talking about. Oh well, yeah. And that's a problem. It doesn't. You need can to make be... it. You can make it spicy if you want to, but most places don't. Yeah. Also, does everywhere grill their tom- tomatillos? No, not everywhere. A lot of places you just boil them. Can you do it raw? So, um, you can. Do, yeah. Um, Chef Wes, Wes Avila of Gorilla Tacos now. Um, what's his what's his spot know. called? He makes he makes like sandwiches and stuff. Sandwich bar. Sandwich bar. No. <laughs> um, but this dude, uh, yeah, he made a lot of raw tomatillo salsa. But raw tomatillos have almost like a kind of raw eggplant texture to them. Yeah, it's kind of spongy. That's why I don't I don't prefer it. So I love it. I love a good charred um salsa though. Like a um, what are they, what are they salsa matcha. No, salsa matcha. That's oh, another. Let's talk about salsa matcha. Talk about salsa matcha and the salsa cannon. Oily. Overrated. Yum. Overrated. Overrated. Places places start putting salsa matcha on things where it doesn't belong. I did chorizo taco with salsa matcha, and it's That's like too what? Greasy. It's too greasy. It's too greasy. You lost the plot. Chorizo salsa should or chorizo taco should have salsa Green verde. Salsa? Yeah. That's another thing we got to talk about. No, it needs a caguate or calabacita. You're hitting hard G on aguacate. Should I not? It's agua. 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 God damn it. Very I good. Spanish. That was very good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't on her Spanish. Uh, talk about, t- tell me about salsa mancha though, because this has been a plague. Not a plague. Salsa mancha is delicious, but like so many restaurants have started just, trying to make their own salsa mancha. Uh, have you heard of chili oil? Yes. It's similar to chili oil. John Cena loves La Granma. Yeah. It's the same thing pretty much. It's just instead of like a uh, chili's like, like. Asian style chilies, just Spanish style chilies. Yeah. Yeah. And it's good. That makes sense. I like it. What do you put it on? Stuff. <laughs> eggs. <laughs> this is a podcast. It's not an interrogation. Uh, I'm not trying to eggs. suss you out. I put it on eggs. Do you really put salsa matcha on eggs? I have like an old salsa matcha jar that like every now and then I bust out. It has peanuts in it. Yeah. My problem though is that uh, it, you don't get acid from it. You get salt and you get chili it's and you chili get oil. heat and you get oil. Yeah, I, I've never loved chili oil that much. Oh, You get Calabrian chili oil. I don't love that. Honey. Even like, I love chili crisp at uh, Asian restaurants. Oh yeah, chili crisp. Is, sorry. There's but no I'm oil. there for the crisp. I'm not there for the oil. I don't need chili oil. Oh yeah, I'm talking about like chili crisp stuff. It's like ma- salsa matcha reminds me of chili crisp. Yeah, so it's basically dried chilies that are, are heavily toasted and fried yeah. along with other things. Spices, nuts, whatnot. And then you like pack it in the hot oil. Yeah. And you it's a, uh, you're gonna stir it up. It's a and great you get condiment. Some chunkies. It's good to come in. Tacos 1986 is a fantastic taqueria that has yeah. a very extensive and good salsa bar and salsa matcha very. is part of it. Yeah. It's just every time I use it, I'm like, damn, I want the acid to cut through all that. Yeah, for sure. I, I think I think it's really delicious with like eggs in the morning. That like just, fun. I love gonna... paste salsa with eggs. I don't. I grew up eating it. I don't like That's that. That's another another talk for red. I don't care for that. We should talk about salsa specific foods. Because like I said, with chorizo. I don't chorizo. like salsa with chorizo. I mean, I like, what, like chorizo taco, like a I don't chorizo queso, ta- queso taco. Only the creamy one, only the creamy green one. You're dipping the fatty chorizo with cheese in the cream. Oh, in the creamy. Oh, creamy green. Yeah, creamy green. Yeah, then, no, that's good. <laughs> but <laughs> I thought I thought you meant like uh, like just like a mayonnaise. I d- ew. sausage cheese and ew. mayonnaise. I feel like I would vom. I'm not. That's I'm not, too much not even for, for me. That's too much even for me. But let's run through tacos. See if like there is. Okay, I'm going to close style. my eyes. You okay, do okay, it. okay. Um. Uh, Baja style beer batter fish taco, red or green? Neither. 
what do you what do you put on it? Black. Oh hell yeah! No, you're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. I'd still go. Keep red going. On that. Um, uh, carnita taco. Green. Green. Um, pollo al carbón. Red. Carne asada. Red. Al pastor. Red. That's an orange one for me, baby. Orange. Uh, yeah, do you, al, pastor, al pastor with habanero. The fruit in habanero. Habanero oh, has a sense. very fruity a profile to it. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, I'm gonna say red though. Uh, tacos de hongos. Mushrooms. Yeah. Uh, I do green and red. Like divorciados, like si. half green, half red. See, si. si. <laughs> divorciados. Uh, no Aust- me gusta divorce. Austin style breakfast tacos. No happy oh, marriage red. ever ended in red. divorce. Divorces are necessary. Red. Uh, for oh, for breakfast tacos. Yeah. I'd agree with that. Um, L.A. style actual Mexican breakfast tacos on corn tortillas. Oh, neither. Salsa. Like a hot sauce. Hot sauce. Hot sauce. Hot sauce. I, hot sauce. I, I no actually salsa. agree with that. I actually agree no with that. I think salsa, salsa on eggs sometimes I don't necessarily want, but I do want Make a heavily bit gross. pulpy hot sauce. Um, oh. uh, taco gobernador. Okay, that's shrimp, shrimp and cheese. cheese. Pepper, pepper and onion, tomatoes. Mm, green with black. Green with black. Oh, smart. Um, um, <laughs> this is so fun. Tacos de tinga. Braised chicken. Braised chicken. Um, braised chicken with know, chilies. There's even, already salsa in the taco, yeah, basically. I don't think, I'm going to open my eyes now. I don't think it needs it. I don't think it needs a salsa, but if I were to, if I were to pick a salsa, orange. Orange, right? Right? Yeah. And there's a reason. Am I doing good? Am I You're doing good. No, no, no. I think I this, is, this is really important, and it makes sense. If you have a very fatty meat, yeah. the acidity of the tomatillos tends to cut through better. Yeah. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have something fried, I think adding a smoky element in there totally. is very smart, totally. especially with fish. Uh, if you already have like salsa represented, like I said, like a tinga that's like basically braised in the ingredients yeah. that would comprise the salsa. What's it called? Oh, a guisado. It's like a guisado. A guisado, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a guisado. Stewy. Um, what about uh, uh, quesadillas? Uh, quesadillas. Red. Red but, all day, right? But spicy red. It's got to be spicy. The it's got to pack a punch red. inside. Yeah. What is like the best? Nachos. Because I'm now obsessed with the idea of All food of pairings and salsa. What is like the best taco plus salsa combination you've had? Ever? Yeah, yeah. Like Gosh. like where you're like, damn, this salsa just like back. works with this taco. I got to go back. I know. I'm trying to brain. think as well. I went to Tire Shop Taqueria one time by myself at like 1145. And um, I had their carne asada with just a slap, fat mm-hmm. slap of guac. And then... Um, onions and cilantro and i think their red salsa was really freaking good yeah so i think that might be one of the best taco salsa experiences i've ever had and that is a hell of a taco (gasps) like wood grilled carne asada wood grilled baby wood grilled and they they wrap up the taco so deliberately like the guacamole is thin and it's kind of slap it's still really i told you it slapped yeah and then they just like close up half the taco but that's a great example of like you to. have you have the green, you have the cilantro and all that from from the guac, and you got like the like fatty but very like blistery smoky meats, so good. and then you just get that homemade like dusky tortillas. dried chili, homemade tortillas, oof, stunning, oof, oof. I love it. What about um, you? I, d- I just there's something about burritos La Palma's salsa being <laughs> poured into. I know I talk about burritos La Palma. Is it red? Time. Uh, so no, so it's it's a chunky salsa. It's a chunky but kind of watery salsa. What color? I might call it um like a uh, salsa jitomate. I think it's called. I know okay. people are gonna say I'm jot a deal around to sing it. Let her live. I think you should. She's from Italy. Salsa jitomate. So it's a very like fresh tomato salsa. Okay. But you get all of because their thing is like the birria bean and cheese burrito is like my favorite thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and so you get that fatty meats with a ton of dried chili already in it. Shoot. Beans and cheese, a lot of lard in the beans. That's what makes them good. Yeah. Tortilla is very fatty. You get this just like ice cold, and they serve fresh serrano peppers. So you take a bite of the serrano. Oh, that's special. And then you take a bite of the burrito, and then I will just sip the salsa because it's almost like a cool refresher. Yeah. And so no matter what you're eating, like there's something that goes with it, which yeah. is what I really respect and appreciate. One sidebar, uh, <laughs> whenever whenever me and my mom would go to Baja Fresh together, she would just eat uh, just four to eight little cups of pico de gallo because she's like, this is salad shirazi. And I love her for it. I love you, mom. She is absolutely correct. <laughs> and uh, you, Josh, what did we learn? I think we learned, no, I think we actually did learn that the world of salsas is incredibly varied. And I think that a lot of people who may not be as familiar with the delightful world of salsas out there should expand their mind, should expand their palate, seek out new things. There's some great products even on store shelves nationally. Airdes uh, is a great brand. Casera is a great brand. Mm 
Um, the one that I like is called Casa Martinez. They have a fantastic Chipotle salsa out there. Aside from that, just go to your local taqueria and just try all the salsas. They'll love you for it. <laughs> yeah, listen, I hope this doesn't come out sideways, but like if you live in America, you live near Mexican people. And you live next to a taco place, A hundred percent. Like yeah. go start talking to people, um, eat some foods that maybe you aren't familiar with. Um, just go out and explore. It's great stuff out there. You never know what you'll find. Find all the best cookies you can buy at the grocery store over at Spork. You guys want some cookies? Next time you're lost in the cookie aisle, search cookies on spork.com to find the best of the best. All right, Nicole. (laughs) (laughs) We've heard what you and I had to say. (laughs) Now it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the universe. It's time for a segment we call Opinions Opinions Are Are Like Casserole. Say that in Spanish. I was just about to Google it. Dude, Josh, you're my best friend. <laughs> you, we are the same person. I think we're sister sister to birth. I don't think we look alike. Uh, let's get to the first opinion, but Nicole, keep Googling. Who's is somebody Google translating? I'm, I got it. Hell yeah. It's probably, is it opiniones? Dame uno momento, por favor, escuchar. Ah, lo, lo siento, senora. All right, here's my controversial opinion. Uh, crab legs are way better than lobster. Mm. Uh, like way better. It's not <laughs> yeah. even, like lobster is kind of mm. hot garbage. Actually, it's way overrated. Bro. But here's here's where it gets Preach. weird. Don't dip your crab legs in butter. Okay. Dip them in white vinegar. It'll oh, change your life. Straight up. Thanks. Love the podcast. Man, Love you guys. Bye. This man knows That's incredible. how to live. Wow. Well, I do agree that crab legs are better than lobster, but I've never ever in a million years thought about dipping them in just straight white vinegar. I would need to season the vinegar a little bit, no? Uh, you can season the vinegar. Like I'm thinking, like a like a Filipino like coconut vinegar, you know, or Does that like actually taste. Does coconut vinegar actually taste like anything? Yeah, it just has like more kind of like depth than it. It it's, does. It's generally seasoned too. At least Fair. like the datu puti thing is. Okay. Th- or no, that's cane vinegar. That's cane vinegar, not that one. They coconut, coconut vinegar, vinegar too. is a thing too, but I don't think it has any like discernible. I think you can get seasoned coconut vinegar, like okay. how to make seasoned rice vinegar. Cool, cool, cool. You know what I mean? Uh, or like a Hawaiian chili pepper water. That's good. That's just like uh, vinegar and chilies kind of soaking in it. But yeah, crab is already sort of fatty. It has that like cholesterol-y fat. Love it. I've never understood crab with butter. Or if you do butter, add some sort of acid on top of that. I got the bug. I absolutely agree that lobster is overrated. I just have never had lobster that I thought was that good. And every time we say this in the kitchen, <laughs> Lily gets like viscerally upset. That's okay. Because her, we love Lily and Lily, we love Lily's we love brother. You. Lily's brother's a lobster fisherman. Lily grew up on lobster fishing boats. We respect you. It is at, it is like ninth on my list of Seafoods? shellfish and crustaceans yeah. that I love to eat. It's Not like, even it's mentioning like lime it's, not, it's like fifth on my list of, of, you want me to do it right now? Do it, go. <sighs> Shrimp. Okay, we got shrimp. Mussels. Mussels. Oysters. Oysters. Crabs. Crabs. Lobster. Lobster. You don't got clams above lobster? No. I got clams above lobster, so okay. we're drafting at six, but I agree with Did you, you on all Did you see I caught that fly mid What about mid scallops? Fly? Scallops? Oh my God, I, uh, scallops is number one. Scallops is number one, so okay, lobsters at six for you, it's at seven for me. Yeah. Right? Okay, what, other, you... what about like uh, sea snails? Uh, abalone. Oh, don't get me started on sea snails. <laughs> Me and I, I love that one restaurant you took us to, Ok Lao. Oh yeah, Ok Ok and Lao. Ok and Lao, ok and Lao um, is my shoot. Vietnamese uh, snail my specialist. Shit. Oh my god, fantastic! And and there's so many species of clams and snails that you could really eat. Vietnamese <laughs> snail eating is my stuff. You get the periwinkle corkscrew snails, Josh. Dude. That was one of my favorite eating experiences ever. Thank Same. you for doing that. Oh my god, and people are like, Josh, you can order for us, right? And I'm like, Yeah, dude, I'm a pro. I know what everything is. I grew up here and I did not know a single word on the menu. <laughs> I know like oak means like snail. Yeah. And I'm like, cool. So let's order a bunch of that. But you just blindly order 15 things on a menu. Yeah. And then everybody was very confused. We got towers of beer and there was, would just bring out live fire grills and be like, yeah. put that on that grill and then eat it. And I'm like, sold. <laughs> I, told, uh, I told one of my Vietnamese buddies that I went there and he's like, call me next time you go. You won't have to wait in line. And I'm like, okay, Dude, Alex, thanks. Shoot. I want to make a trip back down there Let's just go. for that. Yeah, we can do that. We waited like an hour and a half for a seat at like we 9 p.m. on a Wednesday. We three hours. That's false. We waited Yeah, because we did hours. a lot of karaoke that, while we were waiting. But yeah, that's because... What song are you using? <laughs> Believe by Cher. That's a good one, yeah. And you made fun of me. What What I say? <laughs> you made fun of me. What? Well, yeah, but I sang a perfect rendition of Creep by Radiohead. 
It wasn't perfect. It was, I mean, it was emotionally raw, so and that's what you very want. Very special. The word ain't very. I wish I was. Okay, you want to know how to say opinions by casseroles in Spanish? See, si. la opiniones son como guisos. Son como guiso. Oh, guiso. Okay, so stew. They're saying casserole. Casserole is stew. Yeah, I guess word. like I don't know what else yeah. you'd say for casserole. La. Oh, okay. Do you want to do it? It's si, time si, si. for a section that we call Las Opiniones Son Como Guisos. Las Opiniones Son, son como, como Guisos. Guisos. Las Opiniones Son. son... <laughs> Read! Las. Las Opiniones Son, son como, como Guisos. guisos. Las opiniones, opiniones Son Como, como guisos. guisos. There we go. We got it. I did Look it. Look at us. <laughs> Look at us. God, I do not take the language as well. Otro opinion. <laughs> opiniones, por favor. <laughs> <laughs> hey y'all uh my name is kian i live in eugene oregon go ducks I'm track town student, which i hope helps explain my opinion casserole which is to take a piece of salami fold it in half twice mm-hmm. so you have that nice little pizza slice shape mm-hmm. and then sandwich it between two cheeses um eat that and repeat just as many times as you want or until you run out of salami <laughs> uh please discuss thank you so much i love the podcast you know, uh, have a good one. You know what I got to say about this? What's it that? doesn't matter if you're from Eugene, Oregon. <laughs> doesn't matter if you're from Bangor, Maine. Doesn't matter if you're from Dallas, Texas. Doesn't matter where you're at. That's a snack that every American can enjoy. Hey, I'm even going to say Canadians. <laughs> maybe even people down in Mexico. It is so, that combination knows no bounds. You know what it is? It's an umami bomb. I like, love that's it. why it's so perfect. Like, so s- significantly better than if you were like, oh, lunch meat, turkey, and cheese, it's whatever. No, it's because salami is fermented for super, salami. super long, right? Cheddar in the cheese, it's is fermented for a long, long time. What you have done is you created a like textural, visceral umami bomb because you get like so the good. fat from the salami sort of melting in your mouth, lubing it all up, going down. The thing about salami, Damn. it's like not like totally like integrated like bologna. There's like pockets of fat. Yes. There's pockets of meat. There's, yeah. The fat's not emulsified. No, so like it still melts on your tongue. It, it, it melts on your tongue. Totes. That's Totes. great. Also, I want to go back to Eugene, man. I want to go to Track Town Never Pizza. Been. You know, I want to go to the Voodoo Donuts out there. Cool. Don't really love to, Voodoo all that much. but you I've know. been to Portland. It's nice. I liked it. I was thinking about doing my bachelor party in Portland. It has the most. You want to know why? Because mm-hmm. it has the most strip clubs per capita but also in the United the strip States clubs of America. There are less gross <laughs> than strip clubs go? elsewhere. They're like go? inclusive strip that's clubs. That's why you want to go there. One of the strip clubs in Portland unionized. Oh, that's good. You know, right? That's what I'm saying. That's good. So no, it's like the strip clubs there is more ethical. Maybe great, I don't know. great food. Uh, Tampa actually is more than Portland. Is that new? Is that a new statistic? Uh, Damn. No, it's not that new. I think Magic Mike may have spurred more. Magic Mike takes place in Tampa. <clears throat> oh, does it? I've never seen Magic Mike. <laughs> Fantastic movie. Oh I've my seen God. Step Up. And I love that like, Channing Tatum is not... Can we talk about Magic Mike for a second, Maggie? Yeah, yeah. Here's Why are you thing. asking Maggie? She's down. The, the guys... <laughs> I feel like if you made Magic Mike today, all the guys would be like super, super ripped out on steroids, looking like Marvel superheroes. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Somewhat real. Like, they're great bodies. Joe Manganiello. <gasps> okay. Hot Sh- as hell. Great body. Joe he has the best body in that Magan- whole thing. What's his name? Joe? I don't know how to pronounce it. Joe Mag- Manganiello. Manganiello. Sophia... Vergara's husband, babe. Hot couple. Both, I mean, wow, what a stunning I couple. I love Sofia Vergara, but Joe Maganiello. I think how, it's pronounced Manginello, probably. Joe Manginello. I know you love Dungeons and Dragons and being buff. And mm. he also likes the Steelers. I don't know. He loves, he like is obsessed with a certain sports team. Okay. I only know that because Sofia Vergara says that. Great. Um, you're so hot. Come on the show. <laughs> Like Kevin Nash, you know, he's out there Who's kind of Kevin bigger. Nash? Kevin Google. Nash is a WWE wrestler. Google the buff guys. Google Kevin Nash Google from the buff Magic Mike. Google, just please Google the Magic Mike um, please. cast. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Nash. Who's yeah, he that? plays like, they call him Tarzan. Yeah, okay, but look at that. Look at that photo. What? They're not like, it's not like crazy, unrealistic body types. Like, they all look really good. The guy with the long hair. You know, cast. yeah, yeah. He's kind of older. You know what I mean? They're not like Chris Hemsworth and Thor. They're not like crazy amounts of size. Channing uh, Tatum is just like lean and looks athletic. Channing Tatum good. has always had a gorgeous physique. Yeah, hundred percent. But you know what I mean? He's not. He doesn't look like a bodybuilder out there. He looks like a sexy dancer, and I love that. So you're gonna have your your bachelor party at Magic Mike? Thinking about it. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Next opinion. All right. Look, this is Peter. Sorry, by the way, from it's Oregon. Okay. Hi. Don't be sorry. Uh, anyway, you, you said to, to, to say what we think about Orzo. Or, orzo, orzo. I don't know how to say it right. Josh, you say it. You're, you can you orzo. Italian. Orzo. Good. Orzo. It's, it's hey, Greek. Yeah, and, and hot pasta dishes. No, no Orzo. Please, no. But have you not had pasta salad made 
With orzo? Do you know who I this mean, is? It, it, it's, that's, that's the best pasta to make a pasta salad with. The second best, sorry, farfalle is the first. <laughs> but orzo's a really good pasta for a pasta salad. I don't know what's wrong with you guys. Um, and also, uh, Nicole Dimitri Martin is still good and funny. Anyway, I found it indignant, but I really like the show. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Do you know who this sounds like? Peter's electric. Do you know who this sounds uh, like? Uh, Roman from from Succession. Succession? It talks exactly like Roman. Yeah, from Roman is constantly I on, love, Roman's on my favorite uppers. Character. Um, really? I don't know. You just got to. Roman is my uh, favorite character. Uh, that was an incredible call. You should call once a week. Not Peter, that recurring n- segment. Yeah. Now. No. No, uh, I think but just so. call and we just want to hear your voice even before, after, during the show. Doesn't matter. You, I loved your opinion. Um, There's we no, are stupid. Yeah, hundred percent. We're so stupid. Um, this sounds anti-Semitic from somebody who looks like me, but to be clear, I'm Jewish. Peter, Jewish? I don't know. Mom, that that had the full anxiety to just go. Hey, look, this is Peter, by the way. Look, <laughs> like to to just call in with the assumptions and anxieties no. that you have. I loved it. No, I, Peter's I, absolutely Jewish. If he's not get, Jewish. He's culturally Jewish. I didn't. I didn't get any honorary Jew. I don't get any Jew Jewiness. From he's either that Jewish call. or Italian. Okay. And he's not Italian. <laughs> Well, I just, well, Peter, whatever you practice and whatever religion you follow, thank you so much for giving us your opinion. Um, You are correct. We are wrong. We are idiots. Dumb, 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 dumb. Hit yourself in the head. How the hell can you? No, how the hell can you? No, Nicole, let me cook. How the hell can you say that orzo and farfalle are the two best pasta salad pastas? right. When they are literally like the most far apart. Also, They're not the most far apart. Farfalle is good for nothing. Farfalle, what what bigger non-noodle pasta exists out there, Nicole? What's a bigger noodle? What's a bigger that's not a strand than farfalle? What are you talking about? What is a bigger? Because the rigatoni is not uh, as big pe- as farfalle. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Farfalle yes, is, is definitely bigger. There's more pasta in farfalle than rigatoni. Are you kidding me? 100%. You're crazy. You're saying, crazy. Not only that, You're a farfalle crazy is garbo. Man. Farfalle is garbo Have because. You ever? No, no. It's a piece of paper versus a cylinder. Okay, but if you like folded it out, but I Ugh, don't think that's the way it you reacts are, in the you mouth. You are insufferable, Josh Shearer. Farfalle, you are insufferable. The way you pinch it makes it cook unevenly. That is not true. Of course, hundred percent of the time. It's folded over on itself. So what? Radiotare, radiotare, whatever is 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 invalid. Is invalid? No, radiotare is perfectly fine. There's there's <laughs> room for water to absorb in, in all of the Shut crevasses. But up. I'm saying that room for absorption. Like, how can you think what that about the two, two of the most? What about gemelli? But gemelli, I would love a gemelli pasta salad. I think pasta salad one. I would like to eat cold cold spaghetti with mayonnaise. I on hate it. you. I would like to eat cold spaghetti with mayonnaise. People never use long strandy noodles for pasta salad. I think it's yeah. Weird. They do. Have you ever had peanut noodle salad? Yeah, but that's not a salad. That's just a cold Asian noodle dish. It's not like a salad. I'm saying like white trash American. Why? What pasta do you mean salad. you can? No, 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 white no, 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 trash stop, American stop, pasta stop, salad. Stop, stop. We need to. We need to honestly hash this out. You mean to know, sit up at the microphone? No. Sit up. I'm doing it from back here. <laughs> sit up. I take, don't feel safe. Take the time. microphone with you. Take the microphone with you. I'm here now. There is no way that you can sit there and honestly think that pa- Asian style pasta noodle salad is not a pasta. What salad. did you say? Asian style pasta. There's no such thing as pasta in Asia. Oh my God, we're not. We had a whole podcast again. about this. We had a whole podcast. Uh, peanut, okay. You're talking about peanut sauce. You're talking about garbage that's sold by Trader Joe's to white moms, thinking that that cold pasta is healthier than hot pasta because it's quote a that. salad. I'm sorry, Tiger got out of the cage for a second. Nicole, I look what you did to us, Peter. <laughs> this is the power of Peter, man. The power. Of <laughs> power. <of Peter. laughs> okay. Next to Peter. Well, yeah, or is okay? Yeah. It's whatever. Hey, Josh, Nicole. Um, Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> Why'd you wait? Um, my name's Ivy. <laughs> I'm a nurse, and I just wanted to um, mention that actually we still use leeches. I was just listening to your oh, MSG cool. episode. Hell yeah! And we use leeches, but it's not for blood. Um, it's to bring blood to like dying tissues. So if there's a if burn, the sometimes we will okay, put House a MD. on like the burned area. Or like the like a wound area, and it brings blood to the tissue, so that area doesn't die. So just so you know, we still use leeches sometimes. I recently used them. Anyway, thanks for the podcast. Love you guys. Bye. This is not a food opinion, but it is a good one. That's and a, it's great, a medical opinion. That it, we well we talked about how we want to bring back leeching. Apparently, Ivy's bringing back. It's leeching. back. It's back, been baby. Back. It is it's hotter a, than ever. One time, I was watching an episode of Taboo because I used to you know the yeah, show Taboo. Yeah, I used to watch it when I was like ten like years it. old. You didn't like it? Oh, it's my favorite me. show. I want. It made me want to be an anthropologist for like five minutes. They they use maggots in people's wounds to eat oh. all the all the dead dead flesh and like stuff too. 
That's hot. I have a question. Who wrangles the leeches? Ivy does. Well, I mean, I'm saying as a nurse, that's part of your, like, you, you go to nursing school. They're like, well, you got one of you is going to draw straws. The short straw, you got to be the leech wrangler. Well, I imagine that you're going to administer practice, catheters and you got to grab the leeches. I imagine that in her practice, maybe it's, it's a learned thing at her specific practice. It's not something that's taught like in like every single school of nursing. Can I request leeches? I go there, I say, my tummy hurts. I'd like some leeches. <laughs> no, I think you need to have necrosis. <laughs> In order to do so, sorry. Is that, is that where Let you make love to dead camera. people? Necrosis, some vascular necrosis, if you will. That's whenever your skin turns black because that, there's no blood flow to your extremities. I don't like this part of the podcast. On that note, thank you so much for stopping by. Hot dogs and sandwich. We got new audio only. Ep- audio uh, got new audio only episodes for your hoagies every Wednesday, and the video version on YouTube every Friday. If you want to be a fe- <laughs> be sure. <laughs> If you want to be a feature, <laughs> it's a me, a Jada de Laurentiis. If you want to be a featured on opinions like Casarolas, uh, give us a ring and leave a quick message at 833 DogPod1. The number again is 833 DogPod1. Can you believe really people watch and listen to this? It's crazy. Y para más. <laughs> Cocina de Mitical. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna stop. Check us out on YouTube. We launch new videos every week. See you all next time.